The world's population has just tipped 7 billion, having doubled in the last 40 years. But even if population growth begins to stabilize, there's still a big task ahead in making sure that we can all access the basics of life, including energy. In this report, the Economist Intelligence Unit looks at why innovation and education for sustainable development are vital tools for the future. Although most of the growth in energy consumption occurs in developing countries such as China and India, developed countries still consume much more energy per capita. By 2035, per capita demand in China will still be less than half the level in the United States. What does this mean for our development path? Our current development path is totally unsustainable and, and, we, and we know that. And uh, we know that we need to change our development paths towards something else, something different. Really, if I was to put it in, in what really needs to happen, we probably need a century of sustainability. I mean, this is what we're talking about. I mean, that's the kind of change that needs to take place. In 2014, the UNESCO Decade of Education for Sustainable Development is uh, concluded. I think the main achievements have been that we actually have had a decade that had put education for sustainable development at the agenda in all nations in the world. It's a good start uh, for reaching out, but there is a huge need for educational programs and we need to improve and enlarge and to reach out much better. We need to educate in all levels. We need to educate our kids. We need to educate at the universities. We need to educate people out working in, in different fields. Education for sustainable development is not a subject area or a discipline. Uh, at the heart of education for sustainable development is the idea to integrate learning about sustainability into all forms of education, from preschool to, to university. We want to educate a uh, new generation of uh, sustainable citizens. When we uh, deal with the youngest, uh, we have a lot of focus on, uh, uh, on playing, uh, but also giving a respect for, for the nature and its uh, resources. And when they become 8 to 12, we will try to get into what is the real problem. Uh, and, and then we also work with them uh, in terms of discussing with them what kind of future do they want. What are the most promising energy technologies to enable sustainable development? According to the International Energy Agency, renewables and nuclear power will account for more than half of the energy capacity added through to 2035. In order to meet uh, the goals of sustainability, uh, we need new energy technologies. Uh, I also think what we have seen for, for a number of years now, the development of wind, the development of, of, of solar, is very interesting. Uh, Small-scale technologies where we can see rapid cost uh, decrease uh, and, and also a relatively rapid market development. I do not believe that there will be one uh, single technology that will solve everything. Uh, of course, in very many parts of the world, uh, concentrated solar power will be able to play a much, much, much larger role and change the energy system there. But what I do believe in is that you take the local perspective and then you take many different technologies and add them together in a system, in a sustainable system. But we shouldn't only talk about supply, it's also very much about how we use energy. There are a number of technologies related to a more efficient energy use. So we need to focus on, on supply and demand. In some way I think that the, the big business have a lot of resources and without them we cannot move forward, I think. They are so powerful. But on the other hand, we also know that the market orientation means that they would go for where they can earn the money best. I believe that it is a shared responsibility. Unfortunately, I do not see the governments as particularly brave right now. But then when I look at, at cities, I see cities like uh, Berlin, I see cities like Seoul, I see cities like Copenhagen, really taking uh, serious measurements to address this problem. City governments or local governments, unlike national governments, are not constrained in the same way. They can move much faster and they can implement many different types of legislation and so on, which can be uh, really important to promoting sustainability. 
And I think China and India, who are developing very fast and have very large populations, and they are fully aware of the impacts and the challenges that, that, that they're facing. China is actually working heavily on sustainability and trying to build more sustainable cities, trying to develop renewable energy technologies. They're shifting towards electric vehicles as fast as they can. The mega cities we see is exploding all over the world. It's a huge challenge, of course. But in another way, you can say, if we should live sustainable with so many people in the world, we need to do it in big cities. And I think that the challenge is to uh, build these cities to be sustainable systems. The way forwards is not to scare people. Sir Richard Branson, who we all know is of course a billionaire and invests in many different industries, said at a conference when he was talking about sustainability that uh, Martin Luther King didn't say, I have a nightmare. He said, I have a dream. We're only going to get people on board if we can present possible futures and, and visions that are desirable and that are really exciting. And uh, I think we need people like Richard Branson and others in the business community to kind of step forward and bring that kind of innovative thinking and that creativity and, and that drive and that ability to, to, to lead people.